Spirit Lake is a small town north of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, with many haunted houses and much talk of ghosts. Before I get into the deep digs of the paranormal activity in the area, I'd like to put a little background content on the town. I fully want to disclose that all this information I'm providing is word of mouth, except for how the lake was named. Before it was even settled, the Kootenai tribe resided in the area. The tribes in this area were constantly at war with each other. To make peace, the chief promised his princess daughter to marry the prince son of the enemy tribe. But the princess was already madly in love with a warrior. Completely destroyed, the couple went to the lake and jumped in, drowning, and haunting the lake forever. Legend has it that you'll see the two in a canoe with mist around it. The tribe names the lake something that translates into English as Spirit Lake. On top of this eerie tale, there are many deaths and memorials around the lake. It's exceptionally weird because I've been to many lakes in North Idaho, being an avid fisher, and none of nearly as many memorials or graves as this. I only confidently know three stories of deaths in the lake. One was a seven-year-old boy swimming in shallow water. He got tangled on weeds and drowned. I always wondered about why weeds that could easily be pulled up drowned him. The lake bottom is very muddy and stuff like that doesn't root well in there. Maybe he just panicked and couldn't pull up. Or maybe something held him down there. Another was at your classic backwards trespassing high school bonfire party. The junior was drunk and no one noticed him falling into the water. How did he not make a sound? Sound echoes a lot in the area he was in. There wasn't any loud music because they didn't want to get caught. Did someone jokingly push him in and thought he was well enough to get out on his own? Did he slowly fall in and no one noticed? Or did something pull him in? The final story I know is a drug deal gone wrong. Two teenagers were fighting over pot money. It was winter and the other got violent and pushed him in. The water was very shallow and iced over. But he got trapped under the ice. Most of the memorials are male teens. The negative energy is added to by negative witches that have lived in Spirit Lake. They were known for animal sacrifices and sexual rituals. Many of them in the 60s would stop people on the highway at night and try to convert you. They are still there to this day. I lived in two houses down and would wake up to chants in no correlation to the moon cycles. The family women were not allowed to get out. The father and uncle were pervs. They dressed in old-fashioned farmer clothes in browns, grey and black. The women would wear bonnets. To this day, many animals go missing on Halloween. I know they do so everywhere, but much more were noticed in Spirit Lake than any of the other big neighbouring towns. Spirit Lake started out as a logging town and died shortly after. There are many old buildings left and it's advertised as a beautifully historic downtown Spirit Lake with inland empire trails on the local radio stations. It also has many haunted buildings. The old movie theater that is now a florist shop, the Whitehall Saloon, a rundown building next to the elementary school, a greenhouse next to the park, one commercial building that is recently no longer standing behind the hardware store. Many locals claim they have both negative and positive spirits haunting their houses as well. And Spirit Lake is full of good, honest church people. It's widely expected that ghosts are everywhere and we pray devotedly for protection of us and our neighbours. There are two mountains nearby that also have paranormal or alien activity. Rathdrum Mountain and Hoodoo Mountain. Lights, ghosts and Bigfoot reports frequently come in from there. All both negative and positive experiences. I've been hunting many times in the Hoodoo area and inland Empire Paperland as well. I haven't had any paranormal experiences really, I have seen how a Bigfoot could be hiding. There's so much wilderness and pocketed areas that would provide much coverage and hiding spots. I haven't had any real paranormal activities with the area, I think. It was one day I was completely distraught and walked through the woods, and the woods felt comforting and more reassuring than usual. But I'm 90% sure it was just because I love the wilderness. I do know people in groups who've seen stuff that I completely agree with. They're honest, old-fashioned and churchgoers. I do recognize that Spirit Lake has an above average drug usage and may cause some of the paranormal interactions. But I do feel a negative energy in certain areas from the sorrow and dark behaviors that land has and think the druggies feed the paranormal energy. 
Some things are just inexplicably com complicated and unknown. I grew up in Texas and lived there until I was 15. Then my parents and I moved to New Mexico. I would say since I was really young, maybe five, is when I can remember it on my own. But I would see cats that no one else could see. I've been told I began to see them around the age three. It started off at a restaurant I would have to sit in this one table because the, that's where my pet cat was. At first my parents and older sister thought it was an imaginary pet. But then I began to see more of them, but not at the restaurant, and, but at our house. You might be thinking, oh that's nothing. Well, it didn't stop there. In my house growing up, we had an area where our microwave was, and right next to it was where we did laundry or could watch TV. Now in that little area, you got this feeling like someone was watching you non-stop. That's all that would happen to me for a couple of years. But once my sister moved out, things started to happen to me. At this time I was 12, and that feeling like someone was watching you, well it would follow you all the way up the stairs and until you got to the second floor. But wherever that was, it started to get more comfortable and the feeling would go all the way until you went into your room. This one time I was in my room watching TV until I had to leave for school. My phone was sitting on my chair right in my middle. No way it could have just fell off. Now in the corner of my eye, I saw my phone lift up and then fall onto the floor. Now you might be thinking, oh, you're just imagining this, but there's no way this could have happened. Another time my mom and I were in the bathroom, she would has a shelf with a ledge where all of her glasses perfumes were. We're about to walk out the bathroom. She was about to turn the light off. When next thing we know, one of her perfume bottles just fell off the shelf. Now this was in the middle of the night, so it's not like she used it and just set it back wrong. Little things would happen here and there, like hearing someone walking up and down the stairs and it would just be me home. I know what you're all thinking, stairs make noises. Yes, they do. But this sounds as if someone was walking up them. It was a different sound where I would hear someone yell my name as a parent would do when they got home from the store. Things started to happen at night. It would sound like someone is walking up to my bed, but no one was there. I used to have guinea pigs and anytime I would hear someone walking up to my bed, they would go crazy and freak out. Now whatever was in this house got mad when we decided to move. The reason I say this is because when we were getting things packed and organized, upstairs in our furnace door, we had a big metal star. Now, I didn't hear this and I don't know how I didn't, but my parents heard a loud bang when they ran out of their room. They saw the metal star swinging back and forth. My dad was outside looking around our house to see if someone broke in or something. A few minutes later after this happened, I heard a bang in my room so I ran into my parents' room like a normal kid. I talked to my mom and that's when she told me about the star. You know that sound that a door makes when it's locked and someone is trying to get in? Well, I believe we only had like three days left in our house before we were moving out. And I woke up to the sound of someone trying to get in my room. No, I never locked my door. But it sounded like it was locked and someone was banging on my door and was mad. That's all that happened in that house. But we moved to New Mexico and more things happened in those houses we lived in. And now I live in Louisiana and I still have weird and strange things happening to me. My parents and I moved to New Mexico when I was 15. We moved into my Nana's house until we found a place to rent. Now everyone in our family knows that her house is haunted. We're pretty sure it's family though. We were going back to some store to the begging before we moved in, so you can get an idea of what we've had happen or what people have happened to them. My sister, when she was young, saw a man at the end of the bed. My mom saw the furnace door open before my Nana heard people going through papers, things moving, hearing people talk. My dad heard a man yell in his ear, get out. My little cousin never wanted to go down the long hallway by herself when she was younger because she also saw a man at the end of the hallway. Now the things I've experienced when I was really young, I want to say six or seven. My great grandma died that summer. My family and I went down to visit my nana and my great grandma used to be in a wheelchair. So you could hear her coming down the hall. And when we'd visit, I would sleep on the couch instead of on a pallet on the floor next to the bed where my parents were sleeping. This one night before I fell asleep, I hear her wheelchair come down the hall and passing the living room, which is where I was. 
Now let's get to the part of when we moved in. My nana let me put one of her porcelain dolls in my room. Because, well, I never liked dolls. They would freak me out. But this one doll I wanted freaked out about. So it was on a self. Nothing weird would happen for a bit. But then any time I'd come from home school, the doll would be faced in a different direction. Sometimes you would smell powder that older ladies would put on. This one night, it might have been 10pm. Everyone was asleep. I was brushing my teeth and clear as day, I hear a man say Haley. I didn't think anything of it, so I went into my parents' room and said yes, because I thought my dad was wanting me. My mom was still awake at the time and told me that my dad was asleep and no, he didn't say my name. A couple of weeks passed, nothing strange goes on. I was on my phone, probably watching videos, and while I saw a little girl in my closet. After that, I never kept my closet door open. A few nights passed, and I saw a man next to my bed. I told my mom about this man I saw, and said that's the same man a lot of people she's seen. I know it could just be my mind playing tricks, but no one ever described the man to me, and they've seen before. We moved out because we found a place to rent, and first nothing happened for a few months. But once again, it started up. I would hear someone yell my name as if someone was letting me know they're there when it was just me home. This happened one time when I was on the phone with my sister and she heard me respond because I thought my parents got back home and I looked at my bedroom window and no one's car was there. Things got really strange after this one night. I was awake. I went to the kitchen to get a drink. I was heading back to my room when I heard a woman clear as day say, shh, shh she's coming, she can hear us. And they kept repeating it until I got up to my parents' door, which was open. And that's where I was hearing the voice. So I say, Mom, are you awake? And she responds as if she was falling asleep and I woke her. My mom and I began to see shadows in the corner of our eyes. This one time, I was on the couch, my mom was in her bedroom. And my parents' bedroom and my bedroom are right next to each other. So my mom walked out of her room, looked into my room to see if I was in there, and she saw the back of me sitting in my chair. Well, I was never in my room. The thing is, there's no way for me to be in my room and get to the couch, me for my mom, get to the living before her. So she got freaked out because she even took a second look and still saw them me months later. We moved into the house my parents bought. Nothing strange or weird happened in the house besides things missing. Then reappearing a week later or days later. So I'm 21 now and I live in Louisiana. I've been here for almost three years. My boyfriend and I are renting this house. We moved into it a year ago. Nothing strange would happen for a good bit. I had my two stepsons here every other week. Nothing would happen. But I ended up getting pregnant and I was pr pretty in my second trimester and the baby swing that I would put my youngest stepson in would turn on by itself. I began getting weird feelings again. Now I had my daughter six months ago and now I feel like someone is watching me. I've also seen a little boy picking out of my stepson's room whenever one was sleeping. I saw two shadows next to my daughter's crib. My boyfriend who doesn't believe in this stuff. But I was in our bedroom and my boyfriend heard our bathroom sink turn on. And right when I walked out of the bedroom it turned off. Lucky enough my youngest stepson which is one now and my daughter aren't scared of whatever is here. That's all that's happened so far. What my brothers told me. It was around 4am, everyone was asleep, until my brothers heard a flapping sound in their room, like wings flapping. It sounded like it was just above my younger brother. He reaches up and swats it away thinking it's just a fly or something, only to find, feel it crawling around on his blanket. He throws his blanket off and flips on their bedroom light while ducking down to see what the heck it was. Our youngest brother had woken up from hearing him jump out of bed to turn on the look is peeking out from under his blanket, which he pulled up to cover most of his face since he feared it might bite him. They looked around for a bit and realized it was a bat. Not sure what kind it was, so they called to our parents. Our dad was the first to wake up and goes into their room to investigate. Only for the bat to fly into their room now. He tells my brothers to hurry up and shut their door and he'll deal with it. With the bat now in their room, 
He demands that if it's a good spirit, that it will be kind and not cause trouble and peacefully exit the house in a kind manner. But if it's a bad spirit, that it's not welcome and he will forcibly remove it with force. Our dad claimed that after we said these, the bat seems to have grown bigger in size as if to mock him. So our dad got mad and grabbed something and swatted hard enough because he said that one of its wings was severely injured, torn in half from what our dad said. He grabs the bat. What I heard from my bedroom in the basement, angrily Hulk stumps to the front door, throws the door open, flings the bat out the door onto the cement sidewalk leading up to our house. He watches it twitch on the cement before deciding he's going to record it on his phone, only to realize his phone's in his room. He rushes back to his room to grab his phone, only to come back and see that the bat's gone. No traces of blood where it was twitching. Our dad even turned on the flashlight on his phone to check the grass and nothing out of the ordinary. As if the bat was never real and just a figment of their imagination. He spends a few hours looking about and threatening that if it returns he'll kill it for real, before heading back to bed and then go to work later. My brothers tell our grandma later that morning and they pulled their mask on. Searched the entire house, the house, looking for potential holes the bite might have entered from, as well as searching the inside of the house too. We know there wasn't any possible way for it to enter the house, since all the doors and windows were shut tight. The only door that it would have entered through was when our mom came home. But my brothers had stayed up late playing video games and would have heard the bat way ahead of time if it did get in at that time. For the next few days, our parents and grandma would bring up with relatives who practiced shamanism to figure it out. But even till now, we haven't got a proper answer yet. So, I moved into my house after my mom and stepdad got divorced. The house was really cheap, around 49,000. And it was three bed, two bath. When I first stepped into it, the vibe was really off. I didn't like it, but I ignored it. I fast forward about five months later, and I felt like I was being watched throughout my window. My mum got me some curtains, but that just made me feel like I was being watched from my closet. Fast forward an extra two months. The power randomly went out for a second, and I smelled smoke in my room, which is in the very back of the house. Nothing has happened by this point other than the paranoid feelings. Fast forward to the other day, my cousin was at my house and she decided to bring a Ouija board. We met some decently nice spirits named Marie and Emily. They were nice and easy going. Then after Emily, we met a spirit named Edna. Edna didn't tell us anything about her and said, it's coming. My cousin asked what it was and Edna said, you'll see. My cousin tried saying goodbye and then it went to no. She tried again and it went back to no. My cousin deleted the app. Yes, it was an app. And we didn't use it again. Then comes yesterday. Day was normal, but around 10 p.m. my older cousin who was there brought me, my cousin and my sister into my mom's room. She told us that the door to her room had just opened just a bit. And it suddenly slammed shut, opened again and slammed shut again. Then the TV in my brother's room turned on suddenly at full volume. We were told to wait on my mom's bed while my older cousin got her friend in a pendulum. When they finally got back, my older cousin's friend, who were called Josh, started telling us about spirits and why they were there. Then, after about 15 minutes, Josh put some salt in my hand and told me to go around the outside of the house, sprinkling the salt around the walls and thinking stuff like, this is here to help you. After we did that, he told me to go inside and sprinkle salt around the walls. Then. After all the salt was spread, he gave me my cousin and my sister a salt candle and told me to move it clockwise while walking around my room. After that, he had a salt rock and activated it. I don't know what the correct term is. It was now 2 a.m. and I finally went to bed. One of the spirits made it think it was gone, but it wasn't. Yesterday, when I was laying down in my living room, the blind on the window, the annoying long ones that had break and don't close fully, suddenly just all moved to the left, all at different times, like a string of dominoes being knocked down. I got up and ran to my mom's room. After a little bit, the TV in my little brother's room started turning on and off again, and the volume kept going up and down. Then it started opening and closing a door that leads from my mom's room to the rest of the house. 
as if it was trying to play with us. I eventually fell asleep. So I live in a city in northeastern India, but me and my parents always go to our grandma's houses on holidays and occasions in the countryside. I'm 18 by the way. The small town slash village that my grandma's house is in is full of farmland, houses and small woods, if you get what I'm saying. So let's cut to the scary part. The town though is like any other ordinary town in our state, but throughout the years, the people did say some weird stuff. There are countless stories, but I'm going to write which ones I can remember. The oldest I can remember was told by my dad when I was a kid. He said that he and his friends and some of my uncles were drinking and talking in the cabin, attached to the back of my grandma's house in the backyard. The backyard is attached to a small pond and a few square kilometers of woods and farmland, since my family from my mother's side own many parts of the property. So as I said, they were enjoying and stuff, and they saw a fireball going through the bamboo trees in the backyard. He said that the fireball wasn't attached to anything, like a stick or a lamp, but they didn't hear any footstep and saw no one. Odd detail is that they saw the fireball was blue. I don't know, but somewhere I saw that those are associated with spirits and stuff. And it's not ball lighting or stuff. Next was on an occasion I can't remember the whole incident. It's very foggy, but my aunt was cooking in the kitchen and she heard a whistle in the backyard through the window in the kitchen. After some time, my dad and one of my uncles went back to throw away the previous day's trash and he said he saw a guy using our abandoned toilet in the backyard. The toilet was made by my grandpa since many people in that area were very poor. So my dad and my uncle approached the guy and asked what he was doing when he just said that he was there to use their toilet. Since my uncle sensed some danger, like that guy can be a robber or something, so he and my father came back to the house to pick some tools, phones and torches and safety knife. Of course, when they came back, the guy wasn't there. I mean, they just went in for a minute and my aunt in the kitchen was looking out at the guy. I don't know if it was paranormal or an attempted robbery or something. Now there were other events, like one of my uncles who partied late night was coming back one night when he heard something following him. The road was of course dark, mildly foggy, and no one else was there. Such cliche, I know. So of course he got scared and began looking back with his phone flashlight and walking fast. When the footsteps started creeping him out, he played God's Prayer song on his phone and began walking fast. But after just some steps, his phone died and he could hear the footsteps chasing him. He sprinted through our backyard since it was sort of a shortcut. Our backyard and farmlands are connected to the road. When he came home, I don't remember what happened, but I remember him saying to his mother, my grandma, that he was chased by one footstep as in mono footstep and he couldn't see anyone. Next morning, he told me the full story that I just wrote. Most of my family members basically shrugged it out as a mild paranormal incident. As I said before, this town was, has very weird stuff going on. So it's natural to become used to it. In 2019 or something, God worshippers in town community held an event when they sung God's prayers to ward off evil spirits in the town. Since at that time, a lot of suicides were going on and many believe, people believed the evil spirits were the cause. So one night in 2017, I guess, I was laying in bed in the master bedroom where my parents slept on different beds too. When we heard cows mooing just outside the house. When my dad out of nowhere said to my mom that the cows were mooing for a long time, which is a bad sign. When I asked what he meant, he said that it's a sign that a bad demon is nearby and he said that it can actually kill someone. He said the name of the demon, but I can't remember. I was hella sleepy. I chuckled and thought how stupid it was. I mean, the cows might just be hungry, but maybe I was wrong. See, my dad is a half skeptic, but he did see some weird stuff. So it kind of turned him into a half believer too. So I slept like a horse and I woke up at two something AM at midnight. And when I tried to adjust myself, I wasn't able to move. I was confused, but after just a few seconds, a dark figure opened the door. And as it was coming near me, my heart just kept on pounding like never before. As it came to the side of my bed, I can still see the dark figure shadow on the wall. It was a female, the hair was floating or something. Cliche, 
So then it shook the bed and I tried all my strength to look towards the figure. I was facing the wall. I know maybe it was brave or something, but that's not how I think of it. It was reckless. So as I faced the figure, I expected to see nothing, as I know what sleep paralysis felt like. But I was wrong. I saw a smaller figure, or maybe the same figure, darted under the bed. I mean, I saw the bed cover moved and it just went under the bed. The shadow I was, of course, darker than anything around it. Cliche again. I just looked towards the bedroom door and it was opened at that time. I knew it wasn't sleep paralysis. I jumped out of my bed, switched on the light, saw no one was under the bed, decided to sleep on my dad's bed. The bed was for three people, so it was quite large. From being a brave man, I was just became a scared kid. After that, for three nights, I slept on my dad's bed, because of course, scared, but something else too, I kept on hearing growls. I mean, not like cliche movie type of growls, not whispers, but like growl from a person. It's not dogs or fox growls in my area. I can distract those, those are louder. But these are more quiet growls. At this point, I don't know, I was too tired because of no sleep. Then on fourth day, my grandma brought me a blessed thread to tie on my wrist. She said she brought it from the family blesser. It's like family priest or something. Of course, I didn't believe that, but seriously though, it worked. I mean, it really worked. I was able to sleep from that day. From that day, there's a small part of me that's fascinated by these type of things. Sleep paralysis did happen to me, but not like that yet. But I don't think it was sleep paralysis. One incident happened just after a few months from this event. Once again, I was laying on my bed trying to sleep when it shook violently. And this time, I was able to move. It wasn't any sleep paralysis. And of course, I saw no one. My family did believe these incidents. A few of them said it was sleep paralysis, but most were convinced it was paranormal. I mean, my third aunt had the same experience. Shaking of bed when she was wide awake. And yeah, it was no earthquake. My mom is really scared of earthquakes. So she got my grandma a hanging lamp or something, which of course moves when there was an earthquake. I did have some less scary personal weird experiences, but I'm not gonna write those in this part, maybe later. Okay, so here's a weird incident. I don't know if it's legit or not, but I'm gonna add it anyway, cause it's scary. So my first aunt believes that she's more sensitive to these things. My family kind of believed her. Me personally, I don't even know I don't. So one evening in 2019, I guess, my family were chatting and having well family time. I was on headphones listening to some pop hits. We were in the same master bedroom. When I saw my first aunt, the sensitive one, kind of acted nervous or something and looked towards the window. I looked towards the window, but I was on the same side as the window just a few feet away from it and I couldn't see anything nicely. So I just shrugged it off. So I was too lazy to move. But after some time when everyone decided to go outside and get some evening air, my aunt asked my mom to close the window. She said she saw a dark man in a dark figure, no facial features again, cliche. Looking inside the entire time I was chatting. The way she said it gave me goosebumps. She's not a weirdo to make it up. I mean, she's hella social, I don't know. It's just scary. After another big incident, which we still remember clearly as day, because it happened during the daytime. It happened, of course, in my grandma's house. Now, before saying anything, I want to say it does sound like bullshit, but bear with me. So one time my dad went to a land that he owned to see the progression of cutting the trees where a building is about to be built or something. I don't remember correctly. When he came home, after some time, my mom started feeling sick and overheating. She said when she closed her eyes, she could see a man's face. Of course, they called it possession. I was dumbfounded. But when my dad called the former owner or something, I really don't remember, it was a long time ago in 2015 or 16. The former owner said something did happen to a man in that land and it was their relative only. My dad knew it from before, that's why he decided to call. My dad still wasn't believing my mom and asked her to give a description of the man. The description matched perfectly. The former owners on the other side of the phone call were sobbing or something. It was on speaker so I can hear them. Then after some time, she became okay, but she said that she could see the man 
looking at us somewhere near the fence. For the next day, everyone just decided not to talk about it. I can say I'm kind of used to paranormal events because I used to constantly see when I was young, along with having other abilities that I learned to block as I grew older because I didn't want it. I've always been the one who was more intuitive and most spiritually sensitive or open among my cousins. And being an only child, I'm also the last and only one in the family that got the stronger gifts passed on to me by my deceased grandparents and our past ancestors. Some of them apparently being active former shamans, psychics, faith healers, and mediums. My family's bloodline from both sides of my parents also apparently have a long history of involvement with the occult and esoteric spiritual practices. I've always been the first or most targeted or even the sole target of entities in our family whenever we move to a new house, because for some unknown reason, I'm like a magnet for this sort of stuff. So I try to ignore what, come, what makes contact as much as possible. Some just tried to get attention, but there was also more sinister beings I was thankfully able to ward off or escape. I've lived in houses that have had varying degrees of activity. My family have seen some shit going down in broad daylight. I've always tried not to acknowledge entities and ignore what they do. I can say that through these experiences I've had since childhood, I've gotten spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically stronger as I got older. Not one house had entities that had successfully broken down my defenses or rendered me unable to block my abilities. Not until we moved to this house. This particular house that I'll be talking about is different. It's the one that really tested us and left a deep imprint on us. Living in that house changed our lives and left permanent scars on us. We couldn't ignore them like we did to other entities in the previous houses we resided in. This house had demonic entities that were strong enough that they almost succeeded in driving me to kill myself. In this house, more, the more I blocked, the stronger my abilities got. And the more I ignored the entities, the more they persisted. The house had more malevolent beings that oppressed us, more my family apart, and rendered us sick and financially broke. It was probably a miracle that we were able to fight to get out of there before things got even worse than it already was. This was a two bedroom old Spanish era house that had entities that blatantly made themselves known to everyone in the family. My mom, stepdad and I, and even to friends, acquaintances and basically everyone that visited the house. Everyone who has visited that house left there with at least one encounter or with an unexplained spooked out feeling. No one besides our family and neighbors knew about the house's history and the entities or paranormal activity attached to it. We only told it about it to visitors after they reported their sightings and encounters to us. The house had rooms of gruesome history involved the former married owners and their maid. But this is another story for another time. Anyway, according to the rumors, the descriptions, sightings from our visitors, along with our own experiences, the house had three entities that consistently made themselves known, which were a shadow man, and two female beings. Even though those three filled us with dread, we had grown familiar with them as time went by. Whenever something tried to make contact with me, I've always been able to figure out what an entity is and to gauge its intentions. After spending a few moments feeling it out or getting familiar and acquainted with this energy. So early on, it was quite easy for me to pin down what entities were residing in this house, except for no one. A weird encounter with this one unseen entity that seemingly came out of nowhere, left me with questions I still cannot answer to this day. I hope you'll be able to answer them with me. Here goes the story. One day on a regular weekend, I woke up one late afternoon from a deep, dreamless slumber. I just settled in, having recently switched rooms with my mom, so I was still getting used to the space. I woke up a bit disoriented, so I took a few moments to collect myself and wake myself up, completely. Then when I was fully awake, I remember checking my digital clock on my bedside table. For the time, and getting a bit shocked that it was like 3 p.m. I think, wow, I slept that long? I faced my head forward, and when I tried to lift my arms to stretch, I noticed that something was wrong. I felt this immediate physical pressure on my chest and neck that quickly spread to my limbs. I suddenly couldn't move anymore and this is heavy constricting weight on my right side that's beginning to take shape. 
I couldn't see anything on me, but it felt like there was a hairless bald head tucked in my neck, under my jaw with its bony face, jaw, and chin pushing uncomfortably on my collarbone and chest. I felt scrawny arms wrapped tightly across my arms, along with spindly legs holding my thighs in a vice grip. I vividly remember not feeling any clothes, soft flesh, fat, nor any hair on the body. The skin was cold and not soft. It felt kind of leathery, like it was all taut skin, wiry sinew and bones. Kind of like how Gollum from Lord of the Rings would probably feel like if he koala hugged you. Its body felt bony and short, but its grip was suffocatingly strong. It was skin and bones. Its grip was so tight that I felt its bony limbs and head painfully digging into me. I couldn't see it, but I could remember looking down on my chest and seeing in my mind's eye a brief flash of almost corpse-like incredibly pale and greyish gangly arms wrapped across my body. I've never encountered a thing like it. I couldn't figure out what it was or what it wanted. All I knew was that it had negative energy that filled me with dread and disgust. It made my skin crawl and I couldn't breathe. Once I registered that I was being held down, I panicked for a moment, then I got angry at this thing that had the audacity to invade my space and touch me. If anyone else saw me, I probably looked insane trying to wrestle that invisible thing off me. Amidst the struggle, on one strong shove of my hand at its torso, I remember feeling it exhale cold, cold air on my neck, and I'd never felt more repulsed in my entire life than in that moment. I probably prayed and cursed more in that moment than I ever have in my entire life. I was livid and yet also fearful for my life. I thought I was going to die, so I wasn't going to down without a fight. It felt like forever until I actually got to move my left hand up enough to shove its bony jaw off my neck a few times and eventually push it off me. I felt this weird drop next to me on the bed and the moment I got free, I flung myself off the bed and ran to get out of my room. I barged into my mum's room and called her in the middle of a heated negotiation on a phone call. She immediately noticed my distressed state and hurried to end the call to ask me what was wrong and why I woke up looking so pissed. I told her about the thing. She got spooked and angry, so she quickly grabbed a holy water bottle and barged in my room, yelling profanities or whatever was in and doused my bed with holy water. After that, I never encountered the thing again. Or at least if I had, I don't remember having any more than that one time. Also, note that this encounter happened not long after I just switched rooms with my mom due to an encounter with the shadow man, Incubus. It was a little over a week before, when I had to switch rooms with my mom because the shadow man slash incubus, who had been watching prowling me, got in my room. It pretended to be my mom to lay its weight and body on me. It was the first time it finally got close and physical with me while I was awake. After a while of it just stalking me from afar and getting sexual with me only in my dreams. Having said that, I still don't know why just after a little more than a week of having a face-to-face -face encounter with a hulking seven-foot shadow man slash incubus, I then get death gripped by the invisible golem thing after moving in the other room.